with us quickly at times are uh, run very fast here and somehow trying to get the skype connecting very quickly with mr uh, godwin and ek uh, aviation freak and man who so love aviation aviation is in the top burner uh, front but i know today we'll be talking everyone will be looking at the aviation sector uh, with what happened in abuja at the weekend many are asking questions and waiting for the aviation minister uh, to speak with the plan uh, reopening of the airport when are still asking what do we be what we will be looking at here some countries appear to have opened here. So much of that, those talk here, Mr. Golden and EK is on the line uh, this morning. A very wonderful morning, sir. Hi, good morning, Atta. And my dear viewers, please welcome to the program. Now, you're looking very fresh and very relaxed. How was the weekend? Oh, uh, well, wonderful. Uh, I see people uh, still rested here and uh, taking responsibility. I'm, I'm hoping to remain for the street. <laughs> okay, as, as you take responsibility there and you're arrested here, today we'll be looking at uh, the aviation uh, ministry in the light of the lockdown restriction placed by the federal government here. We'll be looking at the exemption list and checking some other issues around here. But very quickly, there have been this uh, report we saw, I saw this morning on, uh, the, on, on the social media, no, on the online platforms, that aviation industry appears to be one of the hardest hit when it comes to the issue of COVID-19. Do you share this? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, there's no sector that's been hit as hard as the aviation sector has been. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The uh, aviation sector uh, has its very unique issues. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just like I said before, when airplanes are parked on the ground, they not only run bills, but they also have their uh, airworthiness challenged. And so, um, while others are, you know, working out the uh, keeping their goods in part, uh, um, uh, having their cars and not running the rest of them, uh, for aviation, as the planes are packed, the planes are busy running years. So, uh, no man is coming, but money is busy, you know, flying away. And what's more, the, um, the, the safety of the airplanes, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, are flying on daily basis. It means that before you have those planes back in the sky, they will have to go through some very expensive uh, maintenance work. And that is, um, that is quite a big challenge, and that is quite huge. Uh, worldwide, uh, the counting is going on, approaching almost $2 trillion in loss, revenue loss. Okay, now, uh, uh, coming a little bit now to narrow it going forward here and checking uh, very deeply here. Are you shocked? Are you are you sure? Let me use the word now that the sector can quickly adjust to all of this very very soon because many are looking at it that some other sectors are trying to pick up very quickly here. Those in the transport sectors are saying should the should the interstate travel ban be lifted that they are hopeful that they will adjust very quickly. They will have this massive rush here of persons moving around freely to re, to reflect the economy here. But for the aviation sector, what duration do you think it will take them to adjust quickly? To actually fit in? Um, it will depend on the funding available. Um, uh, you, there's no magic that will happen. It's either we do things properly and stay safe in skies, or we create a situation where airlines will be forced to cut corners. And when they do so, uh, safety compromise um, it won't be surprising that soon after things will begin to fall out the stars but the God forbid that we don't need that in this country um, uh, uh, there has to be a way of uh, getting the, all the airlines on a round table and very sincerely asking them what the problems are what their financial challenges are, 
and see how they can obtain peak soft loads. Is the government, is the government, if I may cut you, is the government strong? Is the government strong to actually give out such loan? Because for now, it appears every sector is already shaking. Even the budget we passed earlier signed for 2020 can no longer stand, considering the decline in global oil prices. Also, looking at it from that angle here, we're rushing, or we just are, are in the process of getting a reverse budget 2020 that we believe we can fund. We're doing more borrowing at the moment here. Every sector is just trying to adjust itself to see if you can cope and navigate and like the plane actually I get a very very nice angle of attack against the coronavirus pandemic and reach a cruising level and stabilize again are you sure the government can do this sir um government is government and government is awesome anywhere in, in the world um I, I am not a financial expert i must tell you but i am knowledgeable enough to know that all kinds of um activities can be put together to raise funds uh government can decide to sell you know uh, special products um i mean financial products uh to the money bags we have in the country very attractive one and uh, in the process mop up a lot of uh, local care uh it's all about you know thinking it through it's all about uh, getting some experts to help. Here I'm talking about financial experts to uh, to help the government to mop up some some funds from uh, billions and trillions of uh, naira that uh, money bags have in in, in the local banks. Uh, and those who can be honest enough to admit having few sums, even in foreign banks, can be guaranteed safety guaranteed uh, that no one will turn around uh, and hound them. You know, if government comes out with a very clean, clear mission and with guarantee of uh, people's uh, you know, safety, that not when they have uh, come to help, then you turn around tomorrow and hound them and begin to ask questions, how did you, you know, accumulate this, this kind of money and all that. You know, there's, there's a way you put out something said to be from the government with immunity, clearly stated and internationally recognized immunity. Government can mop up funds and have enough funds to do what it has to do. So, from, from, where, from where will government this, be mopping up this fund when we are doing more borrowing? Sorry? From where government from where will government mop up the funds when all we do largely is borrowing? I am talking about I am talking about local not necessarily going to borrow from any foreign nation. We have we have individuals and companies in this country that are stupendously rich. And uh, the security agencies in this country know them. They do know them. And so uh, it's, it's up to the Ministry of Finance to develop quickly a product, financial product. I shouldn't be teaching them this. They should be you know, uh, expert enough to know what to do. Without financial product, uh, uh, taking you know, cash into the coffers of government with um, uh, an immunity and guarantee that no one will be hounded. And, and with a promise to pay back with reasonable interest when it's the that If that is put out to the people, I can bet a whole lot of people buy it and buy for for things to be done. Okay, now quickly, let's, let, let's go to other areas now. We'll, we'll, those, that's an unending discourse here. We'll keep coming to that. The aviation stakeholders uh, weeping across the world, are crying across the world, seeking for aid, aid are seeking some of them for a bailout through their laying off staff, and they are hoping that somehow, somewhat, someone will come to their rescue because now the bills are already piling up here. Uh, the bills are piling, and they want to settle many bills here, as well as try to quickly uh, get back uh, toward the sky and make profit here. But now let's quickly look at the 
issue of the aviation sector and the exemption list. So much has been said uh, since the yesterday morning over the fact that uh, a musical icon, Naira Mali, flew into Abuja and bought a private jet and flew back after a concert that had become very controversial. And many are asking about the exemption list. Is in the exemption list. How come that was approved uh, for him to travel, uh, fly in private jet and fly back? And all of those questions here. Uh, now, let me ask you first, before we go to that, of Naira Mali, uh, the exemption list, what do you think are the content, if you've seen it? Sorry, what do I think? Are the contents, oh, 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 let me ask you now, who are those on the exemption list? Oh, well, I I can't be too sure because I don't have access to that uh, uh, document. At night. I, I, I don't remember when it was published, but I, I just know that um, uh, airplanes that are experiencing, uh, overflying airplanes that are experiencing uh, technical challenges, for safety reasons, can seek permission and be allowed to land in, 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 in any of the open airports in Nigeria, especially Abuja and Lagos. Um, uh, airplanes that are bringing uh, uh, medical supplies, I mean, equipment and, uh, and materials, you know, for the purpose of dealing with uh, not only um, uh, coronavirus issues, but general medical supplies. Uh, are also uh, allowed to land. Uh, I do know that from time to time, the Honorable Minister, uh, Hadi Sirica, um, you know, uh, has the power to consider case by case um, uh, issues of people who have needs, uh, especially emergency needs, to, to fly out or fly in uh, and uh, he has the prerogative of looking through the excuses given and reasons for wanting to come in or fly out and then uh, use this initiative to either approve or disapprove. So um, it, it's, it, it's not necessarily uh, a static uh, list, list that has been drawn and said this is it. Uh, from what I know, it's a flexible thing uh, which lies solely on the laps of the Honorable Minister of um, Aviation um, to consider them case by case. Once there's an application and he considers and he feels that the case meets the requirements that will en you know, enable him to uh, give his approval, he will issue such an approval. Uh, but, but then, the, the question would be, uh, what does uh, society think is um, a good case? Unfortunately, the society does not have the power to make that decision. So it's a subjective thing. The man that has the power to make that decision remains the Honorable Minister of uh, And if he makes a decision one way or the other, it stands either approved or disapproved. Okay, but now that people are questioning his uh, decision, let me come, should it be a decision here? But in the case of Naira Mali, what do you think would have happened? Is it that he approached uh, Minister Hadi Sirika and he gave him the permission? Or what would have happened in the process? Because they now uh, the ministry is still very quiet. I, I did not see the Honorable Minister are proving that um, uh, Naira Mali come to Abuja to take um, to, come to Abuja to, to, to do a program that clearly stands out as a, a, a lawbreaker program. I, I, my, my suspicion, I, I am not saying, I, I, am, I am sure, as, uh, as Egg is said, that that's what happened, but my suspicion would be that some private jet owner who put up a very convincing request to be allowed to come into um, Abuja might have taken on uh, that young man uh, without the knowledge of the Honorable Minister of Aviation uh, that the real reason for coming into Abuja was to fly in uh, the Nara Mali guy. 
Um, uh, I'm sure the situation is very embarrassing for the minister. I can bet you he, he must be very embarrassed. I cannot see any man in his uh, status choosing to take on uh, an embarrassment for himself by uh, approving that somebody gets into the uh, capital city of a country to break the law, uh, not just a local law, but an internationally recognized law. I, I don't see anyone doing that. So I am suspecting that some individual somewhere might have misinformed him, uh, might have asked for permission to fly in with his or her private jet and, uh, and uh, gave some convincing reasons why that flight should be allowed in. And then after getting approval, decided to do the wrong thing by uh, you know, flying in the man that probably, most probably was never mentioned in the request uh, letter. This calls for very serious investigation. The only time I will get upset and disappointed. The only time I will get upset and disappointed with the Honorable Minister is if he does not come out openly to tell uh, Nigeria the uh, fair truth of what happened, if he does not try to cover up and protect somebody somewhere. If I were in his shoes, I would come out clear and clean and tell Nigeria what I approve. And the, the individual that that approval was given to chose to break the law. And I will ensure that that individual is reined in and put to trial so that uh, we can set uh, that uh, signal, send that strong signal that we have laws in this country, that our laws have teeth, can bite, are willing to bite, and we bite when they catch you doing the wrong thing. That signal is extremely important that it goes out there so that people can get serious. Okay, I talk about uh, uh, getting serious here, now, but but for, but in, in in your own context now, uh, what should what do you think if you are to advise uh, Minister Hadi Sirika, what do you think will be the sanction uh, for the LM? Most likely, Anara Mali may not be the one who approached him. Many less likely, what you said, being one who is vast in that field, someone would have approached for a particular genuine or somewhat. A uh, reason that is on the exemption list here, but it was used for something else. Now, what do you think will be the sanction? Tough sanction. Uh, who will I, likely I, be recommending uh, to Minister I Hadis Rika? this way. No, no, fully aware that the Honorable Minister rebans the Honorable Minister of Aviation. But if I were in his shoes, I don't know what he would choose to do based on his own uh, thought process. But if I were in his shoes, I tell you what, I will have that plane grounded for the next one month. Um, and for that next one month, every charge, parking charge that, uh, charges that the uh, airplane will pay for staying on the ground will be paid to the last. I will um, uh, slam very heavy fine. Not necessarily you know, uh, fine as contained in the letters of the law, but impunity a punitive fine against the owner of that airplane and uh, also charge that person that broke that law to court. Both the owner of the plane that um, uh, most probably gave the wrong uh, reason for getting a poor for landing and the musician who or uh, whoever he was. Um, who came in to break the law in such a fragrant and extremely irresponsible manner? I will ensure that they are charged to court, tried, and sentenced accordingly in accordance with the law and send a strong signal that we have laws and these laws have teeth, can bite, and are always willing to bite, and we bite when they catch you doing the wrong things. That signal is important. And I demand so from the Honorable Minister. He has to do something because his integrity is at stake and uh, he, 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 he must do something very urgently. Okay, so now, everyone, now let's, 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 let's go to other issues before our time elapses. Yes, I, I am embarrassed that this is happening. Yeah, what, what, what now that the planes are on the ground now, and we are hoping 
that maybe by next week uh, they should be hitting the sky. Next weekend or so, they should be hitting the sky. Speak up. Can you, can you speak up? I, I, I don't quite hear what you said. Yeah, I said but, not that the planes are down, and we are hopeful that if possible by next week, they will be hitting the sky. Uh, what do you think they should be doing now, those persons who are airline operators? I expect them to begin to um, uh, service their airplanes. I expect them to get those airplanes uh, airworthy and, and ready to take to the skies. I expect them to put in place all the pre-flight protocols that we need to uh, uh, take in order to ensure that uh, flying passengers will not get infected in the airplanes. I expect them to put in place well-trained cleaners who uh, uh, always jump in to sanitize the entire cabin each time a plane touches down and passengers descend back cleaners must go in sanitize everywhere and ensure that there's no chance that any virus is left lying either on the arm of the chair or on the cover of the of the um, of the compartment on the address of the seats. Every new can try of the of the cabin which should be cleaned out all the time. Not sometimes, all the time. I thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Godwin and EK. Uh, having a wonderful time there. An aviation freak one who have been uh, very we wish you at the very best of the working week. And more time as you walk deeply throughout the night. And also, please, I will beg you, find time to rest. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> find time to thank rest. You. Okay, thank you I very you. much. That's yeah, well, you. Well, thank you very much. Any quickly, uh, the program is still this morning on ITV. It would uh, continue in a short while.